Hi everybody, welcome to our revision webcast covering the exam skills that I think would be really useful to nail ahead of your AS microeconomics paper in what, two and a, two and a bit weeks time? What I thought I'd do in this next 15, 20 minutes is take you through a past question, a question that you may or may not have seen before. It's taken from the Edexcel board of May 2014. So don't, don't tune off AQA fans or OCR fans. I'm going to teach you a little technique for the skills and how to structure a paragraph to show the skills of the exam. And hopefully this will be a really useful exercise for everybody, no matter what the exam board is, that is you're taking. But let's face it, the AS micro core is pretty much the same across every board. So just for a couple of minutes, I'm going to take you through the question. And then crucially, we're going to have a look at how you can structure an answer, how you can write chunky paragraphs, which really nail the exam objectives that you're going to be tested on. And if you want to follow up the conversation uh, after, the, after the webcast, do get in touch with me via Twitter. I'm on tutor to you underscore econ. Um, and let's just have a conversation about exam skills. I'm happy to point you in the direction of any, any resources that you're happy to, that you need to look at. This technique I'm going to take you through tonight uh, comes straight out of our revision workshops. And we, we make a very strong focus on exam skills in those workshops. There's still, still a few places left uh, in a couple of weeks' time if you want to go on one of those. Here's the question the question is about potash. Um, potash is mined and it's used, for example, in making fertilizers in farming. Now, typically, exam boards give you markets where something is happening, typically where there's been a significant price change or price volatility in a market. And that allows you to be tested on supply and demand theory. They can ask you questions about producer and consumer surplus and about elasticities of demand and supply. And they're going to give you a market where something has happened and where you can use your theory to explain causation, to analyze effects, and crucially to come in and think about consequences, including policies. So here's our markets, the market for potash. This uh, figure one shows the world price of potash in US dollars per ton. Slightly quirky y-axis, if truth be told. Probably put a lot of students off their porridge when they sat the exam last year. It's been scaled. Notice the, the shortened scale there. So the, the prices range from about $100 up to about $900. Uh, clearly, the price of potash was rising 2010 through to 2011, then reached a plateau, and then started to fall, fell back to uh, lower levels in March 2013. So there's the first extract is the price of potash. The price has risen and now starting to fall, but it's obviously higher in 2013 than it was in 2010. Then they would normally give you an extract, and this is it. Don't expect you to read the whole way through, and if you want to look at this presentation again, maybe tomorrow or another time, you can spend a little bit of time reading through. But they're giving you an extract about the proposal to build a huge potash mine in, in North Yorkshire, in actually the National Park in North Yorkshire. So the idea is they found a huge deposit of potash, and the proposal is a big investment by the company Sirius Minerals to extract potash from underneath the ground. And uh, there's, some, there's some data there about the size of the deposits, about the estimated royalty payments to local landowners, well, that doesn't include me, over 50 years. And also it's important data on the cost per tonne of producing potash, we're told it's about $37 a ton. So there's a bit of extract. And then there's a final um, extract, top of the page here, just to finish off extract one, the mine could produce 20 million tons potash per year, most of which will be for export. Um, Britain is currently a net importer of potash. And extract two, environmental economics, uh, arrives in the, in the question, uh, com, com, concern about negative environmental effects of, of locating the potash inside a national park, impact on tourism, forecasts drop in visitor numbers, uh, but, but serious responding by saying we're actually going to build an underground pipeline to process the potash, take it out to the coast, dispose of waste materials, etc. 
as soon as you get an environmental question uh, extract, you, you should be immediately thinking, all right, what about externalities, diagrams, what, what am I going to draw here to really show my good analysis? So we have a question. It's a question about potash, volatile prices, major uh, proposed mine in North Yorkshire, and kind of the economic and the social costs and benefits of that. That was the extract. And then this is, don't forget, this is an Edexcel board. It's slightly different if you have a different exam board. Edexcel asks five questions. They've already done the multiple choice bit, so this is the data response question. Uh, the first question is about cause of price movements. Second question is about elasticity of supply. Third question is about price volatility and why that might be a problem for producers. Uh, the third, fourth question is the cost benefits analysis of allowing the, the mine to go ahead. And the final question, so slightly left field, discuss the factors that would influence the supply of labor to the mining industry or another industry of your choice. So you could actually write about it in the industry you wanted to, providing you focus on labor supply. You can see the mark allocation on the right hand side. Um, and crucially, the asterisk next to DE means that you, you don't write in bullets there, you're writing proper paragraphs, coherent English, and uh, that's taken into account by the examiner, the quality of writing and style. Now, here's the approach. Here's the approach. There are four skills in the exam that are tested at AS Micro. Knowledge, background knowledge, knowledge of concepts, knowledge of basic economics, application, the use of data, the use of evidence, and ideas, analysis, cause and effect, relationships, and critically, of course, the, the tough one, evaluation, challenging, arguing, looking at both sides of a question, um, evaluative approach. Now, as we're going to go through this question, hopefully you're going to stick with this, I'm going to color code the answer that I'm going to show you. I'm going to color code it. The knowledge will be texted in orange. Application will be texted in a lovely shade of blue. Analysis in an even lovelier deep purple. And evaluation, that's going to be color-coded green. So the idea here is I'm going to take you through an answer. It's my answer, so don't criticize it, please. And the answer will be color-coded according to meeting the different skills of the exam. And hopefully in about five, ten minutes' time, you think, yeah, that's, that's a pretty cool way of of working, developing, building a paragraph um, so that I know that I'm going to get the marks, the KAA marks, knowledge application analysis, and then critically I'm going to get the evaluation marks along the way. If you're ready, I'll take you through the questions and my answers. If you're not ready, come back to this broadcast a little later and maybe go through the extracts again and give yourself a bit more time. So here we go. We've got five questions to look at. First one is really quite straightforward. With reference to figure one and extract one, explain why the price of potash increased between 2010 and 2012. Use a supply and demand diagram in your answer. It's only four marks. We're not looking for chapter and verse. Just looking for a neat, clear answer. So the extract gives you a pretty clear steer. The demand for fertilizer has been going up, rising population, increasing intensive farming. Because potash is used in making fertilizer, there is a derived demand effect at work. Okay? So clearly, the major factor causing the price to go up is an increase in demand. So how to answer it? Well, just draw a diagram, shift the demand curve out D1 to D2. Notice how I've, I've contextualized the axes. I'm making it really clear that this is the potash market. So I'm putting the price of potash up here on the y-axis, and I'm putting the quantity of potash here on the on the x-axis. So make it really clear, and actually put the price that you've established on the chart, put it onto the y-axis as well. It doesn't have to be exactly right, because obviously the scaling here is, is pretty difficult. Then we go to our text. So if you're with me, follow, follow through my text answer here. Figure 1 shows that the price of potash increased from about $330 to about $470. Okay? Now that's fine, that's using the data. And I've just whacked in a little percentage change just to make sure. Extract one refers to soaring global demand, etc. This is shown in my diagram. There's been an outward shift in demand, expansion of supply, and a higher price. My really strong advice to make life 
easy for the examiners to give you these marks. When you're using the data, when you're extracting from a chart or from an extract, underline when you're doing that. Figure one shows, extract one refers to. And it makes it really clear that you're using application. You're using the data in the answer. And number two rule is put the data in. Okay, this is a data response question, not a data ignore question. So put the data in the answer. You should be, all of you guys should be able to get four marks out of four for that. Next question. Analyze why the price of price elasticity of supply for potash is likely to be low in the short run. Six marks. Notice here, everybody, it says analyze. Analyze means there's no evaluation needed. You could write me a brilliant evaluative answer on this. Uh, not needed. Okay, just analyze. Okay, let's go back to my answer. Six marks. How do I start? I start with a really clear definition. Price elasticity of supply is a responsiveness of supply to a change in market price. I then go back to the question. It says low elasticity. So I tell the examiner I know that that means the coefficient is less than one. So my knowledge is strong here. My knowledge is good. Then I move to my analysis. The text moves from orange to purple. In the short run, elasticity are likely to be low because of the long time frame between finding those potash deposits, getting the planning permission, putting the labor and capital together and getting the stuff out of the out of the ground. There's gonna be a there's gonna be a long time frame, possibly. That's a factor, expecting low elasticity of supply. Then I get some application marks. I go back to the extract. I underline extract one to tell the examiner I'm, I'm, I'm applying the data. There's only one potash mine in the UK. Supply can't meet demand. I then go back to my analysis. That tells me the plant must be working close to full capacity. Stocks will be low, and that makes supply inelastic. Do you see what I'm doing here? Okay, I'm starting with knowledge, building the analysis, using the extracts, and that will, that's a great answer. Uh, in orange here, full capacity, stocks, just using those concepts, putting the economic concepts in, makes such a difference to the answer. It really does. Quite a few examiners scan an answer. The marking line. They're looking for key concepts. Help the examiner underline the key ones if you want to do that. Now, you don't necessarily need a diagram, but I've just whacked in a, an inelastic supply curve diagram because that's the sort of guy I am. You don't need to do it. So there we go, first two questions out of the way. Now we come to the three really important questions. Each of these three questions we're going to have to evaluate. So look at the question at the top here. Using the information provided and your own knowledge, assess the possible problems of fluctuating prices for producers of potash. Ten marks. Now we don't have to do a lot of evaluation here. We just have to do a sufficient evaluation to get the four evaluation marks and the six KAA marks. So why is price volatility a problem for producers? Notice I, I start my answer by going back to the data because that gets me some application marks straight away. I want to tell the examiner that I know there's been some price volatility. Price has fluctuated over the last three years. It's gone from 330 to 500, back down to 390. Probably wouldn't have to write all of that, but just give the examiner the sense you know what's happened to the price. Then I get straight into my analysis. Okay, Volatile prices create problems for producers. It's pretty tough for them to forecast their revenues and their profits, but a knowledge there. Investment is expensive, involves risk. If demand is inelastic, then higher prices will lead to higher revenues and great profits. But if they invest in the mine and the world price suddenly falls, for example, if China or goes into a steep slowdown, then potash suppliers will be left with unused capacity and perhaps falling prices, which could leave them with big losses. So a kind of analysis there about why it can be a problem revenues, profits, capacity, but then I evaluate. However, it's a good way to start the paragraph. Extract one application. So the supply cost of potash is low at just $37 per ton. And given that the world price has never fallen below 250 per ton, 
again goes back to the data. Even if prices are volatile, it's unlikely to create major long-term problems, they should be able to make a good profit. That is evaluation. So in terms of shaping the paragraph, start with application, start with knowledge, build the analysis, and then, then evaluate. Don't be afraid, though, to go back to the extracts. Data response, everybody. It's not data ignore. Two more questions to go. At Excel people, these are the 214 markers. And you've got to get your timing right because you need to leave enough time having done a multiple choice and the early parts of the data question, you need enough time to be able to nail two 14 mark questions. Here's our question. Using the information provided and your knowledge, discuss the case for allowing the mining project to go ahead in the North Yorkshire Moors National Park. 14 marks. Again, we're looking here for two solid evaluation arguments. Analyze and evaluate, two points. And if possible, use a bit of analysis diagrams. Let's, let's look at, again at uh, the shape of a, of a couple of answers here. And this, by the way, is not the entire answer. This is just one slide. So here's my first kind of argument. I start with the data, okay? Extract one, I've underlined it tells us that Cirrus Minerals have discovered a huge extract of potash, 2.2 billion tons. That's, that's significant. Okay, So I start with my application. Then I build my analysis. So a key argument is it's going to create many highly skilled, presumably well-paid jobs for the regional economy. This increased demand for labor. When we go to our top, top diagram here, I show an increase in the demand for labor. Could lead to a strong multiplier effect, but a macro to help boost living standards in a region where GDP per capita is below the UK average, using my own knowledge there. New jobs in potash mining could help to overcome structural unemployment, better knowledge, and the loss of jobs in coal mining because there's a high level of occupational mobility between the two sectors. So people who've lost their jobs in coal mines in South Yorkshire, for example, might find it relatively easy to move from South Yorkshire to North Yorkshire to find work in potash mining. Anyway, there's an argument there, and there's an argument which has a little bit of knowledge in there, multiplier, occupation mobility, and a little bit of my own knowledge, plus the extract. However, then we get to the evaluation, and the text turns to green. However, the final impact would depend partly on whether these jobs went to local workers, or whether the skill shortages mentioned in the extract, by the way, could cause potash miners to recruit from overseas. The employment effect would also be limited if, if the mining process is capital intensive. So in other words, the miners are using capital instead of labor, presumably because it's more cost efficient. So what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to build an answer that uses all four skills on the paper. Knowledge of concepts, demand for labor, the multiplier effect, occupational mobility, skill shortages, core knowledge, application, going back to the extracts. Analysis, some theory explained here, a labor market diagram, and crucial at the end, evaluation. I'm hoping that would score me pretty well. Then I can build another argument. And as soon as you get a question on evaluation, uh, sorry, on the, on the environment, you're probably thinking, look, I've done all this revision on externalities, I've done all this revision on market failure, I've got to bring it into my answer. And this is a perfect opportunity to do it. So here's a second slide showing another approach to this particular question. Extract one tells us the potash deposits are found in the North Yorkshire Moors Park, a little bit of application. Allowing mining to take place could lead to negative externalities, knowledge, examples, noise pollution, traffic congestion, what have you. Okay? This might cause damage to local tourism, and then they go back to the extract, to the extract two, suggesting a possible 50% drop in visitor numbers. Without some form of intervention, there could be market failure because the marginal social cost is higher than the marginal private cost. This is shown in my analysis diagram. And then I would put in an analysis diagram showing the possible negative externalities of potash mining. And uh, what's missing here is the deadweight welfare loss, but that would be absolutely fine, this diagram, because it shows the possible market failure. That's my argument, that mining 
could lead to loss of tourism numbers, crucially an increase in pollution, Margaret Faye. However, the planning authorities could insist that the mining company reduces their emissions. All kinds of ways they could do that. They could regulate the industry. They could insist that the mining company improves the local traffic infrastructure. My knowledge, as it says in the question, your own knowledge, my knowledge would be that it's likely the mining company would be part of the emissions trading scheme, European system for putting a price on carbon. So if you're a, if you're a potash miner, and every ton of carbon you produce is going to cost you certain euros, you have an incentive to hopefully create and extract the resources from the mine in a, in a low carbon way. I'm also told, as part of the agreement, I plan to invest in building an underground tunnel. Either way, what are they trying to do here? I'm going to go back a slide. I'm going to go back a slide here. So this is what I call a chunky paragraph. A chunky paragraph. A paragraph that uses the data in the extract, that brings in concepts for knowledge, that does have some analysis, that has a connectivity and a fluency, but crucially is prepared to challenge the point. Notice the, step, the, the text in green here. The green text is criticizing the point that's being made rather than just throwing an evaluation for its own sake. Put a little box in the bottom right hand corner of this page here, just put uh, just chucked a couple of extra arguments in that if you if you extract potash from the North Yorkshire mines, there could be some positive externalities if, if local farmers get cheaper, cheaper fertilizers. And you could put some macro in that Britain exporting the potash could help improve our balance of payments. Either way, this is an answer which I hope brings together the four skills of the exam. It would be pretty hard not to give that full marks. And now we come to the final question. Again, hopefully getting used to the colour scheme here. Orange for knowledge, that lovely shade of blue for application, the deeper purple for analysis, and the green for evaluation. Here's the question. Discuss the factors which might influence the labour supply to the mining industry or another industry of your choice. So maybe you've revised the supply of labour to construction or the supply of labour to hairdressing or to retail. It doesn't really matter. Okay, You've got an opportunity to have a wider discussion here. And assuming you've left enough time to answer the question, how can you get the marks? What I've tried to do here is put together whole series of points. I'm sure this can be improved upon. But again, the color coding tries to show how you can score the various application knowledge analysis and evaluation skills. I start off my question with a definition. So I start off my answer with a definition. Labor supply is in the question. So I want to nail that definition right at the start. The number of hours people are willing and able to supply the given wager. Then I build my analysis. The labor supply curve normally slopes upwards. As wages go up, more workers enter the industry attracted by the incentives of higher rewards. The extent to which that happens depends on the elasticity of labor supply. Okay, a bit of extra, a bit of application. The extract one tells us that many of the jobs are highly skilled. That tells me the elasticity of the labor supply could be fairly low because of occupation and ability. However, some evaluation, free movement of labor within the EU could increase the labor supply for mining. So, for example, we might allow in skilled miners from Poland or the Baltic states, Estonia, Lithuania, and Latvia. So these workers might be attracted into the UK by higher relative earnings. And that's shown in my diagram by a shift of labor supply. So I'm kind of saying here that the, the labor supply is influenced by the wage rate. But it's also influenced by migration. And I'm bringing in some analysis there. Although wages are important, Labour supply might be affected more by a non-monetary characteristic. Well, that's actually quite a bit of evaluation there. But other factors could be more important influencing the supply of labour. But of knowledge, mining is pretty well paid. The vast majority of miners will be paid way above the minimum wage. It's also a pretty insecure industry, as miners in the UK have found out to their cost, particularly when the world price is volatile. And that almost takes you back to the first question, the extract, the chart showing the volatile price of potash. So mining is well paid, it's also insecure, 
this might cut the number of people willing to work willing to work in the industry. And I finish off, I sign off with an evaluation phrase. The insecurity of the work is perhaps the most significant factor affecting supply. And it might not be. It could be something else. It could be a pure wage play, or it could be the risk of working in mining, or it could be whether or not the unions control the labor supply. It doesn't really matter. Providing you're challenging and questioning, you're answering the question. So what I was trying to do in this last 20, 25 minutes is take you through a question. It's not a perfect answer, but my approach here is to think, well, these are the four skills being tested, knowledge, application, analysis, and evaluation. And an exam is just an opportunity to bring the economics that you know and you love into play. Use the extracts. Use the theories you've been taught. Be willing to challenge and question. And critically, use the data that's provided in the answer. Now, I'm not expecting you to go into the exam with colored pencils and things and colored pens. But perhaps in revision, when you're practicing past papers in the next couple of weeks, think about the color-coded approach. Think about the structure of a paragraph and how that could could help you get those extra marks that uh, could make all the difference. Just want to nail a couple of points. Find yourself a really, really good glossary of key terms. The more times you go through the glossary, those definitions will really come into your mind. You can get great marks by putting in clear definitions. Secondly, answer past papers, multiple choice papers. Answer parts of data response questions. Practice, 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 because practice makes permanent. And what's permanent in your mind in the next week or two will stay with you in the exam. So thank you for joining this revision webcast on AS Micro Exam Skills. Keep an eye out on our website and on our blog and on Twitter for future revision webinars. I look forward to keeping the conversation going with you in the weeks ahead. Thank you. <laughs>